so the next speaker is Federico Pradissori from uh, University of Modena, Reggio Emilia, and uh, the title of his talk is Distributed Coverage Control for Multi-Robot System with Limited Sensing Capabilities. All right, so uh, thank you for the, for the kind introduction, and uh, I'm going to start my presentation. And uh, yeah, my presentation is about distributed coverage control applied to real scenarios in which we have robots with limited sensing uh, capabilities. And uh, uh, I'm working on this project in collaboration with the Beatrice and, and Lorenzo. And in general, uh, this is a control which is coverage based control and uh, uh, is, it is a useful tool that can be used to control multi-robot system in, in different scenarios or applications. And uh, we are speaking about surveillance application, for example, uh, exploration, outdoor, exploration indoor of outdoors or indoor environments. And it can be used also in underwater application for exploration or obvious detection purposes. And uh, and uh, um, in general, multi-robot uh, system have been recently studied even for agricultural application or for, for example, for monitoring cultures or, or farmings. And uh, uh, coverage, uh, this type of control is, uh, is to, the aim is to cover a, a given space or area as as the best is possible for the robots. And the, the coverage base, its coverage control is based on basically on the Voronoi partitioning of the um, given area. And uh, uh, what, what is a Voronoi partitioning? A Voronoi diagram, a Voronoi tessellation, or a Voronoi decomposition is a partition of a plane into region uh, depending on the initial set of points we define. So these points, in our case, are the robots, are the seeds, are the so-called seeds of the Voronoi computation. And in the figure of the left, in fact, we have uh, a swarm of agents or, or robots in a given predefined area. And on the right, we have the respective Voronoi decomposition. And and it's worth no, it, it is worth noting that uh, this kind, this type of computation, in order to obtain this result, it needs of global information, and it needs the, the I mean, it needs the global information of all of the robot positions. And um, uh, this, uh, a second important feature, a second important part of the coverage-based control is the Lloyd algorithms. And uh, in fact, once the Voronoi decomposition is completed, the uh, coverage-based control is, is using the Lloyd algorithm in order to define the control inputs to be, to be given to the robot. And this algorithm consists basically in, in three steps. The Voronoi diagram computation, as we defined before, the centroid computation for every cell of the generated diagram, which in the figure is indicated by the, the, the black cross. And in the figures, the, the seeds and the robots are indicated by the, the, red, the, the red dots. And, uh, and finally, so the Voronoi computation, the centroid computation for every cell of the generated diagram, and finally, every robots um, in, in is uh, the control input for every robot. It, it depends on on the centroid computation and of the relative uh, of the relative cell of the diagram. Uh, following this algorithm, the, the robots asymptotically converge to the set of the, of the centroid of the Voronoi tessellation as shown in the third figure. And speaking about the, what we have in literature about the coverage con based control, uh, uh, this type of control has been widely studied in the, in the last years and we have a lot of words, a lot of papers, a lot of books. Uh, uh, which is speaking about this kind of control in different scenarios, different kind of robots or different limitation. And I'm focusing just on the feature we are interested in. So um, 
basically we are interested in in uh, in a kind of distributed coverage control in which we do not have a global knowledge of the robots in which are, we are not be able to compute the complete the, the global Voronoi diagram inside the the whole area and we so we have only uh, a local so we are able to compute only a local a Voronoi diagram for each robot and uh, so we have a kind of range limited Voronoi partitions and in particular we are interested in, de in developing a framework which is based on this kind of uh, fully distributed coverage uh, control which is able to manage a group of ground of robots or aerial robots uh, um, which depends on the uh, limited sensing capabilities of these robots. And hopefully, uh, which is able to control this swarm of robots outside a uh, uh, motion tracking system. Um, so our idea, so here is just, uh, I'm showing the concept of, of the idea. And uh, for example, in looking at the figure on the top left, we have a predefined area in which there are six robots positioned in, 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 this, area, in this area. And we can compute the Voronoi diagram inside this area shown in the figure. But, uh, um, uh, but, uh, but we have uh, control inputs that can be defined. Uh, but the, the robot has its own sensing limitation. So we looking at the figure on the top right, we, we can define a Voronoi uh, local partitioning, as we can say, which is limited by the sensing rate of the robot. And uh, indeed, every robot has some neighbors. Every robot has some neighbors in, in through which it can compute the the uh, Voronoi partitioning and um, um, yeah, so the thanks the the centroid the, following the Lloyd algorithm, then the every robot can compute its own centroid of the of its of the respective cells of the uh, Voronoi partitioning. And so, looking at the last figure on the bottom. The robots move, fall, move, converging to the centroid of the Voronoi cell, which coincide with the with the whole circle in this case because of the sensing rays. Um, because no more neighbors are detected inside the sensing rays, so the the Voronoi partitioning is coincides with the with the limiting region itself. In, in other words, the robots uh, will move until they reach the limit, the limiting situation in, uh, in which there are no more neighbors detected by this robot. Yeah, um, I'm going to show a simulation that better, a matter simulation that better show this feature, this concept, and just to have some up of, of the uh, feature of the photos of images. The darks, the dark, um, the dark blue dot is the considered robot and the lines shows the, the lines shows the um, Voronoi partitioning and the limiting sensing rate. And the, um, yeah, the other dots are the other robots. And yeah, so here we have, here is a quick, sorry. So here is a quick matter simulation of this described concept. And here is shown the motion of the robots together with the respective sensing region. And during the motion, uh, the number of neighbors of every robot changes together with the limiting sensing range. And hence, also the Voronoi diagram changes too. So until they reach the, the, the converges until there is a final point in which they do not sense any more uh, any neighbors. Okay, uh, 
here we have uh, a gazebo simulation and uh, sorry we have a gazebo simulation and the top left window shows the global Voronoi diagram but is only for uh, visualization purposes the computation is using local information and is fully distributed and the robots the group of robots spread in the, in, in the space maximizing the covered area and uh, uh, according to the detected neighbors and uh, uh, yeah hopefully we our aim is to show that uh, the result can be comparable to the uh, situation in which we have a uh, uh, coverage based control in which we use global uh, information for the Voronoi partitioning I'm sorry and Okay, uh, coverage based control in general can be improved using not uniform probability density function for the centroid computation. In fact, we can define a Gaussian probability density function in order to weight the centroid computation and make the group of uh, uh, robots to converge to a determined area. Um, this is a use, very useful um, uh, tool in a real scenario application because we can define in the inside the environment uh, an area an area of interest to, to to better explore, for example, in the environment to make the robots to converge to this in order to explore to better explore this area inside the environment, for example. Uh, we implemented this tool and we did some sorry some some gazebo simulation of it and uh, here we, we implement the coverage control with a gaussian distribution and, and we are assuming that the gaussian distribution is to be known by every robot so uh, in this situation uh, the yellow circle indicates the gaussian distribution mean value with the which determines the, the final position of the group of robots and the variance of the distributions, distribution influences the density, uh, for example, how, how, yeah, the, the density of the, of the robots, the, how close the robots are on, on the final position. Um, the here, different, yes, different, than before, the every robot has to know the only the relative position of its neighbors and and the, the the variance and the mean value of the distribution. So we have to share this information. We consider also the scenario the, the scenario in which we have uh, multiple gap. Sorry multiple Gaussian density function here is just the simulations this, uh, in, with the with the C++ graphical tool and we can see how the group of robots is divided depending on the on the position of the of the Gaussian mean values here is just uh, a possibility that we can can have and here we did some experiments with a motion tracking system using uh, uh, the Tartobot platform. And here is the, the first example in which we implemented the distributed coverage control with uniform probability density function. And we can see the robot spread inside the, the, the VART in order to cover it, the, in order to maximize the covered area depending on, on the sensing rays of each, each robot. And the control algorithm is running on each robot the, in, in a distribution way. Yeah. And yeah, here the, the experiment is being conducted using an OptiTrack system, a motion tracking system. And we did the same experiments using with, with, a, with a coverage based control. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this one. And we did the same uh, experiments with the Gaussian density function. And here, the robots spread in the environment, maximizing the covered area, which is weighted by the density function. 
and the yellow circle indicates the mean value of the Gaussian distribution and the final position of the group of robots. And uh, yeah, as I said before, the yellow circle can represent inside the environment uh, an area of interest, for example. And um, sorry, yeah. And speaking about future works, uh, and we really would like to start in the next month some simulation with the quadcopters, with these in general, and some real experiments with uh, a motion tracking system. And hopefully, uh, in the next month, we would like to have a deal, some, we'd like to conduct some experiments uh, with. with with time, even with UAVs without a motion uh, capture system. And uh, in general, uh, we would like to um, we'd like to show how a fully distributed implementation of the coverage space of this coverage space control, and in particular with only local information that is computed only locally using uh, only the information about the, the relative position of the neighbors uh, can bring to a nice result, which is comparable to what is known with uh, uh, coverage, coverage control, which is using uh, global information in order to compute a Bernoulli diagram. And show that uh, uh, sufficiently increasing the limiting sensing rates of the of the um, of every robots, the result can be comparable. Um, can be comparable to in which we have the robots with unlimited sensing rates, and we have the robots that can compute the um, the Voronoi partitioning using global information about the, the old robots inside the, inside the area, the interested, interested area or environment. Um, here I left an email for if you are interested in any collaboration or more information about uh, the project. And thank you if you have any question. Okay, there is Michal asking a question. What sensors are you planning to use in order to replace OctiTrack? Right. Uh, for the, the turtle bot, the, it is the, on the turtle bot, there are kind of ladder implemented of it and we can use them. But for the UAVs, we are, we are, we are not, uh, we didn't thought about, uh, we didn't think about uh, uh, exactly what kind of localization we can have. In order to in order to obtain the relative position between the robots, but we are uh, collaborating with other partners inside the project, and uh, I mean, someone else is working on it. So, uh, is there a way in the current methodology, if you have more than one distribution, to control the relative group size, so to know to determine to control that, for example, one distribution should get 30% of the total amount of robots, and the other one 70%. Or that's not possible right now. Yeah, it's, that is another feature we are working on to define a parameter in order to decide uh, if we have more than one uh, Gaussian probability function to define a parameter through which we can say, okay, as, as you're saying, the um, three of you, you can go here and the others you can go there. But uh, we are working on that, but uh, we didn't find we didn't find any anything like that on the literature. But we, as far as we know, we we, did, we didn't uh, we didn't write a lot of lot of papers about that kind of feature. Thank you very much.